Hello guys, this is Mike from Deathless Gaming, and tonight I'm going to be reviewing War Thunder! Alright, so, what is War Thunder? Well, it's a World War II MMO slash flight tank simulator, and soon to be warship simulator as well. It's uh, free to play, and it was released in August of 2013. Originally only as a flight simulator. So tonight I'm only going to review the flight simulator aspect of the game due to uh, how different the game is in the tank slash flight simulator side of it. It really is a different game, so I want to uh, review both sides that I won't e miss anything right now. So how is War Thunder, the flight simulator side, played? Well, it's got three modes. Arcade, which basically, not realistic physics, you can get away with going like 700 miles per hour in a bomber upside down. That kind of stuff, you can ram people. It's really kind of disgusting-ish. Um, realistic, which is uh, slightly realistic. Um, you can't ram people. Uh, speed restrictions apply. Physics restrictions apply. It's easier to stall. It's easier to go into a death spin. But you can still have, like, you know, icons saying, this is the enemy, and, you know, how many meters it is. And then there's Simulator, which is really hard because it's basically like it is in real life or close to it. Um, speed restrictions, you're, you have to be really careful with how fast your plane's going, what you're climbing at. Fuel will run out in, an, in a, usually an hour. Um, once you drop your payload, you have to land to pick it back up. Um, in all of the modes, you can't respawn with the same aircraft unless it's in custom mode, but... That's a side mode I'll talk about later, but um, the only way you can get repaired is landing. It's very difficult, and you don't have any icons telling where you where anything is. You only have a map to go by. So, uh, how does this fit in, and how does this work with the player base? How do you not get bored? While it does give you an arena type feel, even though it's kind of an MMO. Um, but it doesn't. It's actually real. Dif really difficult and takes a lot of skill to master. I'd say um, it's really fun once you get the hang of it. It's not one of those uh, COD type FPSs feel where like you know you play a match a hundred times. They recycle through a lot of maps, so it usually doesn't get boring. They have several types of missions, such as bomb this base or bomb this group of bases. And there's several roles, so you can be an attack aircraft if you bought that type of aircraft, or you could be a bomber. So you can really switch up your play style easily without getting bored. And that's one of the nice things about it. Um, a lot of type of first person shooters and flight simulators, it gets boring fast because you don't have a good variation of roles. While on this, it, it has a lot of variation of roles. Like if you're flying a fighter aircraft, you could be dogfighting, but you still could possibly have, let's say, a bombs attached to the bottom of your aircraft wing. So in that case, you could bomb, let's say, a convoy. But at the same time, you could be shooting out AA guns. Or you could be escorting a, uh, let's just say, like a bomber to its uh, objective so that it doesn't get shot down easily. And it's that type of thing that really switches this game up a lot. Um, I don't think I've seen a lot of games that's offered this much variation for one role, and it's really easy to change your playstyle. And um, with arcade mode, it's really fun because you pretty much you can do like unphysicsy things and get away with it. You can do like fun maneuvers. Um, you can go, you can just dive in your bomber and go like 600 knots, and then pull up at the last minute and bomb an entire base. That's really fun. But sometimes it gets boring, you get frustrated with it, and then you can do, let's say, something like um, realistic mode. It takes you a long time to get to the place where you want to go in realistic and simulator mode. 
it can take you like 10 minutes to get to the base you have to bomb, which is a pretty long time compo compared to uh, other game modes and other games where you have to travel. So it's a lot of logistics um, in the realistic and simulator modes, which gives it a whole, it's like a whole new game. You have to figure out how to keep your aircraft from shotting de getting shot down if you're bo a bomber. In fact, most bombers in realistic simulator mode have tough times because they get shot down a lot without even getting close to the base. So you have to be uh, creative, you have to like fly in the clouds, you have to stay hidden. And uh, with fighters, it's different. You could be escorting but the bombers, helping them, or at the same time, you know, you could be, you know, taking out a convoy, but then you're vulnerable. So fighters kind of have to group up in realistic and simulator mode to avoid being hit. And uh, this variation of gameplay is really what I think stands out as a meta game for it. It, it. You truly can't get bored. You can have squads, and you can easily have team speak running while you're doing this game coordinating. Or you could ha use the in-game chat. People in the game aren't that mean. I've noticed a lot of games of the pilots are elitist. In this game, they're not as much. I mean, there can be a few airheads right now then, but um, it's pretty good. So, what specifically do I like about this game? Bomber is cool. I love bombing. If you're a new player, a great way to earn XP is just flat out bombing. And then you can switch over to your fighter, which requires a little more skill and takes a little bit less uh, XP. It, with Bomber, it's pretty much you get a lot of XP fast, in my opinion, but that's how I've pretty much ranked up. Um, it's got good gameplay, I'd say. Um, it, let's say you're in a realistic mission, you get shot down, um, you can't respawn, you just have to return to hangar and you have to wait for your aircraft to kind of have a cool down or until the mission's over. But instead of doing that, you could just watch the gameplay and it's very nice because you can uh, basically put it in cinematic mode and just watch aircraft dogfighting and you can help out the players and say, hey, turn here and there. Um, and it's really fun. It offers n n entertainment to not only watch the game, but play it. So, um, Graphics. The graphics are amazing, especially if you don't have a good graphics card. It's really weird how good the graphics can be with such good FPS. It's, I, I really like it. and it's, I haven't seen this many games get this good graphics without sacrificing a huge amount of FPS or, you know, basically hardware banning a whole bunch of people from their game. Historical accuracy. Um, I've been to Oshkosh, Wisconsin, which is the second largest air show in the world. Uh, the I've seen most of these aircraft in real life, and the historical accuracy of these aircraft is astounding. They really put a lot of heart in making these aircraft. Uh, it looks just like the real thing, I have to say. It's like I said, I uh, was talking about the air and realistic. It's got really good meta game. Um, a lot of games, you know, like Call of Duty or let's say Plant Side 2, it can get boring sometimes, I have to admit. Um, you have to question the meta because a lot of arena type games, you get that a lot, unlike the MMORPGs. I feel like this allows so many worlds for you to expand and try. And it, it's got pretty good meta game. You can do teamwork, you can do lone wolf. It's truly amazing how good this game is. Uh, and lastly, I think this is a very official term. This game, frankly, just has cool shit. And I mean it. This pretty much has some cool shit. And uh, I know a lot of people uh, aren't up for understanding how much cool shit this game has, but it pretty much has cool shit. Alright, so what do I don't like? I'm going to go on the negative. It takes a long time to master skill, especially with fighters. Um, it's really annoying. Um, but if you can get past it, it becomes extremely fun, extremely fast. But it takes a lot of skill. Um, people with mouses and keyboards tend to be more OP do the way your mouse can aim better than your joystick. I use a yoke which isn't what you're supposed to use, but it works really well with bombers, which is what I like. But it still actually works really well with aircraft. The only problem is when you want a dogfight, it can be really hard because you don't get the accuracy you have with a mouse. So people with a mouse and keyboard have a lot more accuracy than you do and can down an aircraft pretty quick. 
uh, it's, it can, um, some things aren't realistic, like I've noticed in realistic and simulator mode, if you turn your aircraft just a little bit too much, you'll immediately, the physics computer will break and it'll just snap off your keyboard when you're going, like, perfectly normal speed. Um, it's really weird, sometimes it does that. I think some of the physics, like how much torque will turn your plane, is a little bit overdone. Uh, certainly some of the sensitivity controls you have to change a lot. Um, I'm not saying the people who made the Realistic Simulator game did a bad job, but uh, it's it can get really annoying sometimes. Also, in arcade, the fact that you can ram somebody, even if it is arcade and it does create that fun aspect, I feel like that really should be taken away, especially in a flight simulator, because it just like really discourages people from playing the game the right way, and it really annoys me that they allow a lot of aircraft to get away with ramming. Alright, I'm going to go from a dev standpoint. Um, it, they built this model in a really good free-to-play, the developers, and it's pretty, pretty amazing how well and how nice it is. Um... They've got a lot more content to come, which is pretty nice. Um, they haven't fully integrated tanks and um, planes, which is why I'm doing the review separate. So that's kind of really annoying. But once they integrated that, that's they're they're really making progress pretty fast. And once they add ships, this could be a really nice game. And I think the developers. Um, have set this up for much more potential than a lot of other free-to-play games out there. I think this could have a really long-term based community because number one, it's ahead of technology and the graphics, and number two, it's ahead of technology and a lot of other stuff. Uh, it's got a good player base. They're not as negative as some player bases. Now, obviously, I haven't been on their Reddit, so I may retract that very soon, but as far as I can tell, they got a pretty good pair player base. I've uh, witnessed a few bad apples here and there in my gameplay, but besides that, they overall, it's it's not mean. I mean, uh, usually developers can change the attitude of a player base. I know it sounds stupid, but if the developers seem cranky and they're like, you know, go away, you know, the player base will generally start to get that attitude and then it can get really messy, but these developers have set a really good example they know how to appease a player base, and they know how to form it and cultivate it. Closing comments. Um, it's a pretty good game overall. I'd give this, I'd say, about a 9 out of 10 brownie points. It's a really nice game, and I think if anybody who wants to play it will enjoy it. If you guys have any comments, if I missed anything about this game in the flight simulator aspect of it, uh, please add them. If you'd like to add your own thoughts on War Thunder, please do so in the comments. Uh, subscribe to me. Uh, if you like my videos, you know, like them, but uh, you don't have to. So this is Mike from Deathless Gaming. Have a good day. Signing off.